All right, now we're ready to do a problem. It's an example problem, number three on page 292 in the book. Uh, a problem where there's both trend and seasonality present in the time series data. Uh, below here, uh, I will show you the chart. You'll see that uh, we generated the chart in the same way that we did in the previous clip when we were just talking about trend. You can see the trend line moving along here and the data points which appear to have a seasonal pattern. The trend line equation is above it, right up here. And again, we covered that when we covered the trend part of this forecasting assignment. And so if you're worried about where we got these trend forecast numbers or the slope on the intercept, you need to watch the other clip. Added to that, we now have estimated seasonal indexes. Now these are just arbitrary. You remember if they're less than one, that point falls below that average trend line. If they're over one, that means that they're above that average trend line. And again, these are estimated. Now, what we need to enter in now are the formulas associated with this so that Excel can help us find the ideal forecast. So, we'll first start by entering in the sum of these first four seasonal indexes. The reason there's only four is because there's four quarters each year. And in addition to those four quarters each year, the seasonal pattern will repeat itself the next year based upon which quarter we're in. And so we only need to sum the first four because that pattern will then repeat itself. So the seasonal sum, if you remember, the sum of those indexes should equal the number of P. So here we're just going to type in sum, select the first four seasonal indexes, close the parenthesis, and hit enter. And that's an important formula that turns into a constraint for us when we use solver. The next formula that we need to use is the formula that repeats these seasonal indexes. It's very easy. I simply put equals and reference the quarter from the previous year. You see, this is the first quarter of year two, and so I'm going to reference the seasonal index from the first quarter from year one. That's right here. Type that in and push enter. And again, I can just copy this all the way down to the bottom, and it's going to automatically copy those four numbers each year. To repeat. So here in the third year that we're going to be forecasting eventually, the first quarter has a seasonal index of 0.8, same as the first quarter of the first year. Okay. Uh, the next thing that we want to enter in is the seasonal forecast. And that's simply the trend forecast multiplied by the seasonal index. Very simple. We're going to type it in equals the trend forecast cell times the seasonal index cell. And that is our initial seasonal forecast. And I'm going to copy this all the way down to the bottom. See that it's created the forecast for us. Now the next step, we're going to use Solver to optimize this. It's going to choose the best seasonal indexes to choose and also the best slope and intercept for the trend line part of the seasonal plus trend forecast. And that's going to happen next. 